Minnesota is known and loved in part for its majestic deep dark forests. Our trees are important for water quality and erosion control, carbon sequestration, products for society and wildlife habitat, but our north woods are in trouble, according to local scientists. Last night at 10, we told you that some experts think the boreal forest could become grasslands in as little as 50 years. And today in this next weather investigation, we look at where production is now and where it needs to be to build forests of the future. It's spring, and that means the state forest nursery is humming. Boxed by the hundreds. I know my daughter thinks I'm crazy because I tell her, like, I lift a million trees in a day, and she's like, no, you don't. I'm like, yes, I do. And stored in this cooler by the thousands. These tree seedlings are destined for public and private lands to build new forests or replace old ones after fires, blowdowns, or disease. I want to do something that benefits everybody. It feels good. But this operation is a fraction of what it once was in Minnesota. If you go far enough back in history, yes, we had more, more uh, tree nurseries in the early 60s. Uh, the state produced about 40 million seedlings per year. That was towards the peak. So you can see that, um, you know, there's been ebbs and flows in the amount of seedling production in our history. And if that's true, we seem to be in a bit of a lull. This year, the state will produce roughly two and a half million seedlings from its nursery, a steep drop from what it once was. It's purely about demand, or is it about budget? It's, it's both. Doug Tilma with the DNR says the state wants to ramp up to 10 million seedlings a year, but it'll depend on private orders. About half the forests in the state are on private lands. Um, so we will increase to meet the, the private lands demand. The legislature allocated $10 million to upgrade this facility. They anticipate a wave of business. I see future possibilities. Uh, well, that and also a, a task list. A wave farmer Stefan Meyer also hopes will come. And what will these be? So these will be, almost all of these are red oak. Here on this patch of old hunting land, he's getting in on the tree growing business, driven by local scientists saying our north woods could become grasslands in as little as 50 years because trees can't adapt as quickly as our weather is warming. Well, I don't think any Minnesotan wants to see northern Minnesota turn into prairie. He'll sell most of these to the Nature Conservancy, a nonprofit dedicated to planting forests of the future. With all this attention and interest in reforestation and making the forest healthier, we're, we're seeing the, the need to really increase our seedling production great. probably sevenfold over current okay, levels. Great. Do you agree with that? That's correct. So, in order to have a, a large impact on climate mitigation, tree planting, um, Seed and seedling supply is a barrier to that right now. But to make that happen, uh, yeah, we need more people like Stefan. This is my first time ever diving into trees, and it's definitely a learning curve. Growing trees takes patience. It, <laughs> that is an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you think about working with trees, it literally you have to think in terms of decades. We need to be on top of doing what we can to help nature adapt. There is Changes that are occurring due to climate change, how rapidly they're going to happen, I think, is, is still something to study and to see the results of. Um, I think what's really important, though, is to anticipate changes in the climate and to make our forests more adapted to those changes. First, great story. Thank you. But how do we do what he just brought up, fortify our forests and, and make them resilient? Yeah, there's lots of different prongs if you think about it that way. You need to diversify the types of trees you're planting. Think about disease comes through and wipes out whole species of trees. You need to plant diverse forests. They're experimenting with taking seeds from further south in Minnesota. The, the DNR is doing this, and U of M researchers and scientists say we should be doing this. Mm -hmm. They take even the same species of tree, just take the seedling from further south in Minnesota. It's more adapted for warmer. Mm. Um, through natural processes. Yes, through natural. It's just human-assisted migration is mm -hmm. what we called it last night at 10. Um, not just planting more stuff, but planting the right stuff, being smart and strategic about where the seed is coming from um, 
and, and what the composition looks like. But the boreal forest is so special to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. It's very important, and it's massive. I mean, you can see it from space. You can see it from space. And I, I had an opportunity to go back uh, on Sunday when we had our top 10 weather day. Mm -hmm. Skies were nearly completely clear. And as we take a look at the satellite view from our weather satellite, you can sort of see the, the browner shades south and west of the Twin Cities. We call those parklands. This darker green you see up here in northern Minnesota, that's the boreal forest. And yeah, you can see it from space. And so it's no wonder that that boreal forest does quite a bit of work to help clean our atmosphere. I mean, you talk about mm -hmm. losing trees and maybe some people are like, so? Mm -hmm. Well, the carbon pollution, so CO2, that is leading to climate change, is removed at one of the highest rates in the entire country from the trees in the boundary waters. If you look at how many thousands of tons are removed per year. And it's a similar story when you look at the rest of air pollution. So think smoke from Canadian wildfires. The darker blue those colors, the more junk those trees remove from the air. And that's what the boreal forest does for yeah. us. And I would just add that we talk a lot about the state, uh, the state's goals to reduce, you know, carbon emissions yeah. or reduce CO2. And all of those calculations take our forests into account. So, they're so, counting yeah, on them to take there. that amount yeah. of carbon out of the air.